the shake, rattle and troll. It's time for the award-winning shake, rattle and troll. Yeah, kiss the one that A show for the serious fishermen as well as the novice looking for tips from the pros. Shake, Rattle, and Troll brought to you by Bill Loot Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram. I-17 and Camelback Road since 1927. Yeah, we got the power, we got the speed, we're running wide open on a midsummer breeze. Fresh water, soft water, watch out for it. Yeah, we got the power, we got the speed, we're running wide open on a midsummer breeze. Fresh water, soft water, watch out for it. Saltwater fisherman, the man that fears no fish, Bass Daddy and Tournament Pro, Don McDowell. Yes, sir. Hey, I'm Don McDowell. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, awesome day in the desert. Back, back from California. You know, the next time J.K. I had decided to head to L.A. By the way, do you see him wearing a kerchief now? Is that the it's L.A. Not, mode? Excuse me. A kerchief. It's a bandana. Oh, okay. Whatever. I forgot That's mine. the influence that comes from California. He comes <laughs> back. Look what he's wearing. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Plain Jane vanilla, but probably a soft velour zip up shirt with a bandana <laughs> around his neck. Hey, Derek. Nice to see you, buddy. <laughs> yeah, nice to see you. Really, really good to see you today. Yeah. I'm glad you survived your uh, LA trip. <clears throat> yeah, it was. Uh, wow. Yeah. Uh, I think I hit every every uh, highway in Southern California trying to find the I-10. Huh. Never should have left it. Man, I'm <laughs> telling you, it was. Uh, it's good good to be home. Always good going, but it's better when you get back. J.K., what's happening in your world today? You know, the javelina are still alive and well uh, out at the unmarked compound, and we're hmm. frustrated, but that's okay. There's still time. I still have two full weekends left. Well, we've been following a flap, and uh, Derek, you're going to have to hang with me on this. There's a uh, a new device out called a Bowmag. Oh, I saw. Yeah, <laughs> and this is interesting because I love archery, but this is called archery on steroids. It makes archery oh. more fun. I mean, you know, there, there's a lot of lot a lot of things to be said about things that go boom. You know, I like it. Big bore rifles, big bore handguns. Yeah, little bore handguns, little bore rifles. You know, there's a pow, definitely at the end of the, at the end of the fun. Archery's like, thunk. yeah. Excuse me. Thunk. No, it's not thunk. It's thunk. okay. Well, it depends on what you're shooting. This bow mag is like, uh, you know, somebody stole the idea. It's a great idea from the uh, bang sticks that we use as scuba divers. Right. The only problem is, you know, we're using 12 gauge up to 12 gauge shotgun, shotgun shells. Nice, you poke the shark, boom, game over. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of be- a lot of merit in that. Now, this bow mag is a little little device that you uh, screw on the tip of your arrow, let's say. Actually, yeah, that it, the arrow explodes is- on impact. Yeah, the bullet is contained within the broadhead itself and on impact it detonates. Yeah. I think uh, Rambo owns this. That's right. That Rambo. See, I knew it. Yeah. First Blood. That's where it came from. Rambo First Blood. Yep. Bingo. I like yeah. I see the video uh, here. Another Italian with a vowel on the end of his name. <laughs> <laughs> Go figure. I can't so, imagine. So it's a mob thing? Yeah, it's a mob thing. So what's the long and the short of those using that in Arizona? Legal, illegal? Totally, totally illegal. Don't even think about it, guys. Okay. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. Unless you want to use, if you want to use that bow with the bow mag during a rifle hunt. During a general hunt. Right. Knock your socks off. <clears throat> Would that qualify for uh, the ham hunt? Probably. Although I think you better go in front of the commission first. Or, at, no, not the commission. Go to the no. department first. And I, have, I'm not going in front of the commission with a bad... Thing no. Like that. no. <laughs> Let's put it this way. One thing Your I've, presence or mine in front of the commission on anything that's out of the norm that we try and do, not a good idea. No. 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 We're still fighting uh, going before the commission on the Cormoran issue. Well, speaking of which, by the way, the commission and the department get my vote of the week as heroes for their decision to notify the Fish and Wildlife Service that, hey, guys. It's us, and guess what? We're we intend to file suit. <laughs> no, the Game and Fish Department is uh, notified the Fish and Wildlife Services that they have they have every intention of filing suit regarding the Mexican gray wolf issue. 
I talked to uh, Attorney General Brnovich uh, yesterday on that, as a matter of fact, and he's uh, uh, willing to discuss uh, a whole lot of things, but that's not one of them because it is pending now. Oh, yeah. What has uh, come down that we talked a little bit about that last week, the uh, Department of Interior, Sally Jewell, has 60 days to respond to that Mm -hmm. one way or another. If she doesn't, suit will be filed. And on the 7th of January, Congressman Paul Golsar ripped him. He's on the Natural Resources Committee, too, isn't he, with Doc Hastings from Washington? Uh, uh, yes. Good. So you've been in touch with his uh, natural resource guy. Any uh, comment from Matt Salmon's office? Uh, yeah, they, they are fully supportive um, of everything that Arizona is trying to do. They understand the complexities of what's going on. Uh, and they're also very, very, very aware of the outrage that most Arizona residents have. And... Uh, there will be some documentation forthcoming in the next couple of weeks. Well, I think it's uh, interesting that uh, both uh, Attorney General Bronovich, uh, the commission, and uh, Ed the third one in there, uh, Paul Gosar, uh, relate back to nearly 90% of the original wolf's habitat is in Mexico, and we are not going to have full recovery in, in the 10% here in Arizona. so Well, air, between Arizona and New Mexico and, believe it or not, Texas, that was only 10% of their historic Texas, range. Te- Texas is taking a hard stance like Arizona has. They're going, hey, see that little piece right there? Y'all need to erase that. Because mm-hmm, we're not going to have them. All there. y'all. Get All it y'all, done yeah. now. Yeah. Texas has more political clout, obviously, by far than Arizona or New Mexico do. And there's no surprises to how the fact that Texas has been conveniently disregarded by Fish and Wildlife Services as having any area for Mexican gray wolf, even though historically they were there because they don't want to fight that fight. No, they don't. No. Well, I think we've got a good fight coming with uh, Arizona and hopefully uh, through the WAFA uh, organization, the other states will sit up. Pay attention, take notice, and file suit. Monkey see, monkey do. Let's go. Yeah. I mean, I mean if, it, if every Western it, state were to do that, yeah. it would. it's kind of akin to if you stand there and somebody's poking at you all the time, poke, 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 and you do nothing, you deserve what you get. If you don't fight back, you deserve what you get. It's kind of like jihad. Yeah. You know, jihad works both ways. Yeah. We kill us, we will kill you back. Bingo. No two ways about it. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on before I get re- called to the principal's re- re- office again. I, I'm <laughs> almost on the verge, John. In 1976, France wouldn't let the United States Air Force, Army, or anybody that had airplanes use French airspace to fly our warbirds into Iran to extract our people. I remember that. And that was... Uh, Pretty serious boycott issue in my mind. Uh, I was doing a lot of scuba diving at the time and had a lot of U.S. diver dive gear until I found out, yep, they are a French-owned corporation. There was a yard sale, let's say, within 24 hours. And uh, since then, I've stood true to my boycott. And, uh, it, it, you know, if it's a French corporation, anything having to do with France, I just stay away from it. Uh, kind of like Starbucks. Um you know, poke fun at Starbucks, but uh, I'm real serious about that. I don't go to Starbucks for coffee. No, no, I'm absolutely done with them. And if you're not up to speed, Starbucks, they have made a lot of money. They've been extremely successful, as you know, but they've made so much money that now their mission statement includes what we're going to do or not do on the landscape. Uh, they don't want you out catching stripers. Oh, woof. Snatching stripers or whatever That's not you do. Fly. Yeah. No. no. So, in other words, we'll go to Dunkin' Donuts still, mm-hmm. right? The, you know, they, yeah, they just want to make a good cup of coffee and a dandy donut. Mm. Had too many donuts during the holidays. We're not going there anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'm going there. <laughs> We're, with this group has sworn off sugar as of today. Wow. Uh, yeah. Wow. Yep. That's a pretty extreme resolution there. It is, especially hanging around the Coast Guard. What I've, what I've uh, learned with those boys, they do a lot of training. But they also everything they do is surrounded by a meal mm-hmm. or a buffet. Oh, buffet! 
Well, yeah. I miss a good buffet. So their their idea of a buffet in the morning is as many different kinds of styles of donuts as possible with as many different coffees. A lot of lot lot of food there. Good stuff. Good stuff. You mm-hmm. got to diversify your uh, your donuts. <laughs> no, just no. That that's that's not. No, it's, it's more difficult. <laughs> that look on its face. Well, there is one shop here that you can't buy a. Uh, uh, some type of infusion in the center at uh, on a maple bar. Mm. You have six different choices of stuff you can have in your maple bar. That's kind of like putting new hooks on your crankbait. You know, you're you're getting custom. You got a Pro Series maple bar. <laughs> nah, <laughs> Derek, know. come on. Yeah, I don't I'm know. just trying to relate it to my language. That's all. Yeah, you can't. You've never you've never stuck yourself with a maple bar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, if if you read the instruction. Most people don't know this. On the inside of a Dunkin' Donut box, it says, grab tightly between forefinger and thumb, apply directly to buttocks. <laughs> so, I'm just saying. So, it's all good. Yep, San Diego's alive and well. Glad I'm home. Don't want to ever go back unless it's uh, getting on a tuna boat. Nice haircut. <laughs> There'll be a film at 11 on that. Thank you. That You're was, welcome. That was JK. Special K. They call you Special K for a reason. We're here with Derek Franks, and we're going to learn about Team Rattletrap. Yeah. Hey, they were established in 1964. Bill Luke Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram, 1927. Ooh. At 27th Avenue in Camelback. I-17 in West Camelback. Eh, I say 27th Avenue. I like it better. They moved again. No, they didn't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> All right, Mr. Rattletrap. Hey, thanks for coming down. What's happening out there on Lake? Me- I got to ask you. Um, start us. Had to, had too much penne last night. Never mind. Let, let me rephrase. Hey, good to see you. Yes, sir. Let me good ask you. you a question, if you don't mind. Yeah. Rumor has it you had Mr. Dale out on the water from Fast Track. How'd that work out? It was good. Uh, well, I mean, he's a big old boy to have in a boat. Well, he followed me out because the the day before I was. I was telling Sean and and his and his dad that I caught a 170 striper in a trip, and he was like, "What? We got to go out there right now!" So the day after that, they went out. I gave them a topography map screenshot off my phone of where I was, and they didn't catch any. Which happens because right now fishing is still labeled difficult out there. Because that's the-, the thing that guys don't understand about sharing information. It's like Dean Cruiser sitting in here sharing information. You can't go out and catch Dean's fish because two days later and they're not there. Things change. Exactly. Changes in hours. Exactly. So I scheduled a trip the next day. I uh, called called them up and said, "Hey, just stay on my wing and I'll take you out." And so they they stayed pretty close to me and we whipped them. Uh, which you know, right now the, <laughs> fishing is difficult because they're suspended and they're moving. And they're in deeper water. The water temp's 57, 56 degrees. The wind changes direction about every 15 minutes. A lot of inconsistent stuff there. But if you can cook that first striper, they'll, they'll stop their downrange motion and, uh, just because of curiosity will keep them around the boat. And, yeah. and so I've, I've been focusing, uh, in about 50 foot of water. Uh, I can see them all over the place. And if you can get them to stop for two seconds, you can, you can really punish them. There's not a lot of size, <laughs> but uh, one way to filter how, out. How cruel is that? Punishing give them a, free a, a ride. nine-inch fingerling. <laughs> <laughs> I, I call it giving them a free ride to Phoenix on the ones that I choose to keep. But I, yeah. I still throw back about 90% of them. Um, That's a bad thing. They need to be removed. Yeah, they do. Uh, one you, thing I fertilizer, do. Fertilizer. But there's, there, there's a thing. Is you, you have to use the fish. Yeah, oh, that the, fertilizer does that all the time. That is wanton waste. No, it's not. Yeah, that, that's a controversial topic. Do we? No, we it's not controversial. There's a case that is that uh, uh, was established right here by former operative Rob Young, former NBC director Randy McElrath for uh, using largemouth bass as fertilizer. That was a bad thing. Definitely. I'm just saying, thou shalt not waste fish. I'm not wasting it. I'm utilizing it. 
And there are a few people out there that we're gonna call it, don't get it. Yeah, we're going to call it consumption. I have absolutely no problem consuming. There's no, no letting your rose bushes consume stripers. That's that. That's not a good bad thing. juju. No, no, it's a bad karma. Yeah, yeah. Are you familiar? I mean, you're picking on me with uh, acronyms OGT. Mm-hmm. I know that one real well. Yeah, they make house calls. Oops. <laughs> yeah. Oops. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you see all that stuff on Northwoods Law. That's a true story. Yeah. Come knock on your door. Yo, JK, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. I, I'll tell you what. I had the uh, opportunity of uh, having the new uh, game game chief thief over <laughs> game my, thief chief. Yeah, right. That's what he is. Okay. So, yeah, <laughs> chief deer cop. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it came over to my home. We had uh, you know we had some some coffee. We had some rolls, and my neighbors are going, Don, what'd you do? I go, it's it's okay. No, really. What What'd was you it? do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's there for about two hours, and, uh, you know, I've got a nosy neighbor, so I walked out with my hands behind my back. And, oh, yeah, that'll do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, it was good. It was perfect. <laughs> so, back to you. How yeah. many fish How many fish did the uh, Dale boys catch? Uh, they caught about 20 or so. Nice. Uh, you know, I don't blame them for staying anchored down. Mm. Uh, they said if we caught one, we'd be happy. Well, the second they said that, they caught one, and they said, we're going to stay right here. So I broke off and just kind of tootled around, and I found a good school of them. And I had this group from Michigan. Wait, 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 wait. Michigan? Yeah. Hold on. I'm, I'm going to back up before that. Tootled? Yeah, is that a word that we need to know now? Yeah, is that part of the that's vernacular? A, that's a Texas, yeah, that's a a Texas, Texas boating thing. term. Yeah, it's kind of like noodling, but you're uh, you're not in the water. I don't know. I made it up on the fly. <laughs> oh, I've, I've been up 30 no, minutes. No, we, we have an SRT dictionary. We just had a yeah. new word, too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll have to add that one for sure. That That's good. That's right up there with medification and edumacation. Jennifer, please put tootling down as part of our language <laughs> nice. now. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, fishing's, fishing's solid. You just have to be patient out there. You can see the fish on your screen, uh, but sometimes they, they just don't want to bite. And you just have to be patient enough and just keep bugging them. And I'm going to keep asking you the question until you start doing it. Or are you throwing it at the pumps? No. That's what I just, you know. He refuses to on. see the I know the north part of the lake so well, and it's two miles from where I launch, and I just I just uh, do what you I do up there. You launch it at Castle Creek? Um, you're you know, well, uh, you're launching from the west side, aren't you? I am, but Castle Creek is so it's so popular right now. I'm still in Coles Bay, and you know, and it doesn't get the boat traffic mainly because when I write my fish report, uh, how in the hell are you launching at Coles? No, I'm I'm launching at Castle Creek, but okay. I'm, I'm driving to Coles two miles. Not bad. Yeah, you can launch there. I get at there Coles. Quick. I can't say I've tried that. But Coles, Coles Bay is solid right now. The water yeah. level is rising pretty pretty fast, actually. And what what I found out, if you want to weed out the small fish, you just go catch you some live shad, which I think is pretty fun just to do. Are you catching any uh, gizzard shad in your nets? I've never caught a gizzard shad on that lake. All mine are thread fins that are, have that bright yellow tail, three-inch yeah. body, a yeah. little purple on top. Right. And that's a good way to match your. So you have snuck color. up in the closure of the Agua Fria and gone up in the. I've, n- I've, I've n- no, I've never really cared for the Agua Fria. <clears throat> I've never really cared for it. I might be missing out. No, well, there's eagle snipers up there with binoculars. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, a lot of stuff going on. When we come back, I want to tell you about uh, the 17th annual Bill Luke Bass Days. Yeah, I'll be there. Nice. With a pole? Uh, so I have my whole boat there. Okay. Would we'll sneak off. I don't believe that he's not with it this morning. Too busy. Yep. Too busy tootling around the I lake. just woke up. All right, we'll be right back. Toodles. Woke up this morning about half past four. Who'd I see tiptoeing across my floor? My ever-loving baby with a rod in her hand Heading for the creek called Catfish Land She yelled at me and said, get up, son Come along with me and let's have some fun 
I grabbed my britches and along came Oh, Jennifer's taking a shot at you. She's playing, uh... Catfish, catfish, boogie, yeah. boogie, 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 All right, now, why are you not throwing ounce and a half cast masters with the dress tail, with the white feather, with the red thread at the pumps? I'm just asking. I don't have an answer. <laughs> you need to expand your horizon. I don't horizon. have a spoon sponsor. No, I'm, I just, um, uh, I guess I'm too efficient. I want to go straight to my spot, two miles from where I put in, and just. Okay, what rip. happens if, just saying, just saying, what happens if you go out on the water and there's 20 boats in your spot? You need alternatives. I need a contingency plan. Yeah. Plan you, C. You get up on the wheel and put your tootle in. Yeah, you tootle, right. o- you tootle over to people and you say, hey, yeah. out of here, right? Obviously, exactly. don't know who I am. You're yeah, on my, my name's spot. Derek, oh, and I am the bad. striper snatcher. No, just tell them, hey, I'm S- Sham Sattenberg. That's my spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be bad for my PR, but... Yeah, I might I get a bone bag right in the chest. Probably. <laughs> or in yeah. the engine. Yeah. My 150 would be down. I'm sorry, but I am fascinated by that bone mag. I, I can tell. I think when you buy it, it should come with a three foot knife. Just an <clears throat> accessory. For what? I already got one. <laughs> you know, I use a three inch blade to totally bring in a full 800 pound elk. You don't need a yeah, three foot anything. The, the testosterone's got to be. Uh, See, here we go again. Go here we go. On. Having See, that, that conversation. It's testosterone John, gets John, you in trouble. At, at some point last night, had a, a, a male cognition. Regarding testosterone, it gets us in so much trouble. I mean, you know, we really, and, and that's all I can say. Yeah, I mean, he's just like figured this out. Uh huh. There are always moments of clarity in everybody's life, and that's just one of mine. And, and so, your moment of clarity in this cognition that uh, we get in trouble because of the testosterone level that we mm-hmm. suffer from, or mm-hmm. not, which is a whole nother. Yeah. set of troubles yep. and that women in fact do rule the world r- rule the world absolutely no question in my mind i say to just go with it there'll be a less violence in this world are you kidding me <laughs> come on you're talking to mr violence uh, here yeah. let, let me tell you about the women in the israeli army those are the baddest warriors on the planet i or, believe it the Turks were even scared of him, and those guys were fearless. Wow. Uh, I'm serious. Not just my opinion. It's a matter of fact. Yeah. See? So much for your peacefulness yeah. attitude there. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying I know who rules you know, the world. We send expedition, expeditionary Marines in. Uh-uh. They send a battalion of pissed-off women in. First. Yeah. <laughs> End then, of story. Yeah. Game's over. Then, huh. they, then they send the gay guys in to... Sweep up and redo the curtains and wash the windows and repaint. And <laughs> oh, don't go there. No. Okay. Oh, we're no, we're going to get in trouble. So, you, you're, you're not throwing a cast master because how come? Look, at we've had well, this discussion I will say, in the past. I will say that since they've pulled into deeper water, that'd be a good tactic. I just haven't tried it. Just saying. Because they are pumping water in at a high rate. I mean, maybe those striper are hanging out with pumps. No question about it. Yeah. Kind of like saying that you have one big pot and you choose to work on the left edge only. Come on. There's a whole big world out there, that body of water. You yeah. need to find spots. I you know, will say this. You know that metal that holds elk? <laughs> yep. He's bypassing the metal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I will say this. and uh, I own a Facebook group I just started. It's called the Arizona Fishing Club, right? And I said tootling 15 minutes ago. They're listening right now. Tootling. Yeah, I've already got two uh, two comments saying, what are, what, what, are, what are you talking what are you about? <laughs> I've got to be inventive. I've been up 45 minutes, and uh, I'm just going to freestyle it. Well, since the show started an hour ago, that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's kind of wing, well, it ra- wing it radio day. It we're, started we're off with hunting. I was sleeping. <sighs> not, it's not a bad thing. No. But I in will fact, say, I don't know why you don't have a bang stick in your boat. You know, they asked me if I want to do a combo guide license. I should. I want to. I might do that. Do a little hunting on the side. I would pay to watch that with a bang stick. 
Yeah, I, I'd pay to watch Derek out in the woods. <laughs> well, I'd, I'd like to. You I'm have to do know the your waterfowl element. thing. Man's got to know no, his we, limitations. You've got a Texas boy here. They're adaptable. No, oh uh, yeah, I waterfowl. Sh- waterfowl. I don't consider to be hunting. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? It's wing shooting. It's a totally different sport. It's not hunting. I like it. I like waterfowl, but I mean, I I did the whole wild hog hunting, but it's kind of different in Texas with a knife. No, no. <laughs> they have these big perches that they sit up on top of, and it's got a a, a hot tub, and they serve drinks. Yeah. And there's a feeder out about 50 yards away, so that they can't possibly miss. And every 15 minutes, the feeder clicks on it, throws corn out, and all these poor little critters come in, and they go, "Oh, look at that! We're hunting." It's Oregon Trail. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> not hunting. Random automatic weapons fire. fire. Yeah. yeah. I'm surprised there's not a turret mounted on those next to the well, uh, sauna. Uh, Hawaii and some of the Hawaiian islands, uh, uh, the Samoans, and uh, even down in New Zealand, those guys down there, they have uh, one or two little dogs, no no firearms, and a knife. Ooh. Yeah, the dogs go in and get the, get the hogs all pissed off and uh, keep them occupied while you go in and grab them by the leg and yeah. stab them in the heart. That's pretty solid. That's there. challenging. That's that's where the testosterone the, yeah, gets yeah. us in trouble. Way right there. big time. Yep, yeah, see, fine. right there's another yeah. example. <laughs> <laughs> I, I watched a video yesterday on, on YouTube of um, classic failures. Ninety nine point nine percent of them were guys trying attempting to do something that just involved stupidity, and I can only com- It's only coming through testosterone. Usually Certainly followed, not tootling. Usually followed by the term, <laughs> hey, watch this. this yeah. <laughs> Check this out. And then and then after you see it, and then you hear the, oh, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I want to talk. Uh, yeah, please go right ahead. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're going to talk about fishing for a couple minutes. Um, I've got a few people that want me to talk about, about winter tactics and why they're not catching any fish on Pleasant. Well, for starters, those fish have moved into deeper water. And How deep are they? Uh, what one might ask. Thirty-five to fifty foot, and they are moving. Uh, they're definitely not staying still. They're suspended, and when I see a fish suspended, that's going to make me think that they're moving. You know, the ones that are laying down, uh, those are going to be the easier ones to catch uh, in transition spots. But if you see them moving on your screen, okay, okay, stop right there. Describe a transition spot. That's what we look for. In your mind, what is it? Yeah, what oh, is that? When there's a, a change in depth uh, at a significant rate in a small space. No, it's not. It's when you go to California without a scarf <laughs> and, <laughs> and you come back. And you come, and come back, back one. with and your you little <laughs> scarf on, yes, in the yeah. soft velour pullover. And you have new Pandora stations playing. Yeah. Woo, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But... <laughs> I left a ram man and came back in a Mustang. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, that's funny. But uh, the one of my topics I like to talk about is line diameter because that's the biggest mistake people make here in these clear water impoundments. And one one of my members was asking me about uh, when is it okay to use braided line, and I will say. That there is an application for it, and I got into it a couple of weeks ago. You, get, you know, these are look at his face; those are fighting <laughs> words. Yeah, <laughs> you stop talking dirty about braid. Oh, line. I know, because I usually don't use braid, but I will say that uh, a good application would be a, all the time. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so a couple. You weeks, know, you can drop shot with you know thirty, forty <laughs> pound braid. There we go. <laughs> It's called Bubba Shot. Yeah. <laughs> God. I'm serious. Here's the rope. Yeah, so, uh, right. A couple of weeks ago, I was fishing. Uh, I like to go to the back of Humbug and fish all that brush. And the water clarity is not an issue because it's... Oh, no, wait a minute. You were just talking about you hanging out at Coles. Which is it? Well, it all depends. You know, Humbug, I'll fish that shallow water I'm over brush. 60. I don't want to hear about depends. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get a phone call over this show for sure. The show's <laughs> over. You're going to principal's office. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, when, when you're trying to bulldog a, a fish off a swim bait out of brush, I will use braid because water clarity is not an issue because of the algae blooms. Write that down, bulldog. Yeah. Bulldog. Yeah. I'm starting to, to man up now. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, toodles. Yeah. <laughs> but if, if water clarity is not an issue, I'll use braid. 
So that, that's the story. If not, I'm using uh, fluorocarbon because the water clarity is so clear. Nice tiny diameter. Yeah. yeah. Have, you, ha- have you thought about uh, mainline braid with a fluorocarbon leader? I've, yeah, I've thought about it, but I haven't gotten <laughs> it. It was a passing not long. thought. Now. No, because the reason I don't is because I'll get hung up, break the line, and I'll end up retying that stuff more than I like. It's a bugger, isn't it? It is. Yeah. All right, having said that, hey, if you need a ride, check them out. Field of Crush Jeep Dodge Ram has a year-end clearance still going on. I-17 West Hamelback. They have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of new vehicles. I-17 and West Camel Back Road. We'll be right back. All righty, we're back. Okay, so let's get back into this uh, braid thing. It's really uh, uh oh. Uh, you know he wasn't going to let I that go. No, no. I saw smoke coming out of his ears when you started talking about that. He had that uh, back I, off. I look. understand Lake Pleasant. Line size, line size, line size, line size, down size, all, all these things. Fishing for stripers, that, that's a whole nother ball game, I'm thinking. Yeah. Well, my theory, I just like to use the smallest I can get away with. But I will use something bigger if I had the bulldog. Bulldog, yeah, I said it again. Out of bulldog. the trees. Yeah. You're only bulldog when you're bubba dropping. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've never bubba dropped. Huh? Okay, so what do you use on your... Uh, uh, Magnum 18s. Mm. Why wouldn't you be using braid? I like to use... You uh, use a Magnum 18, and you're dragging, you know, somewhere in that 30, 35-foot water column range. Yeah. You're just liable to get hit by a 40-pound striper. Yeah. Well, one, I don't usually troll with those. I usually troll with a swim bait. All right. I have to confer with my co-host here. Yes, now, sir. When he first started coming down here... Yes, I remember. He was trolling. Yes, he was. And now he doesn't troll. Mm-hmm. He toodles. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Toodle. Yeah. Toodles, y'all. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you so, toodle, there are out. certain things you just can't live down in life. Yeah. And, but you know, uh, if I do want to use a uh, more pound test line, uh, I'm still sticking with. I like to use something real price economical. I like to use big game, trilene. Bow bags. Yeah. Pa. Boom. Okay, wait a minute. Let's talk about this line color, line size, being a neophyte into the water into the world. All right, help him out here. Now, I have trolled many occasions for trout up in Big Lake and Sunrise and some of those places. And I find that if you have a really light line and you get whacked by anything two pounds and above, you you run a real risk yeah. of snapping it off yeah. when you're trolling. So how do you compensate the difference between trolling and a light line in your small diameter? You're running a risk. Yeah, well, my line diameter is going to be, well, I'm going to use 8-pound test, and I'll use a rod that has a lot of flex in it. You okay. Know? No. So it'll, it'll Bass, take a lot of that no, no, shock. No, 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 no. Bass anglers use rods. Rumor has it you're on a pole. <laughs> Here we go again. It's a southern thing. Okay. I can't help it. Got my pole. Got my pole ready. Yeah. I'm going to toot line out of here. Snatch a pole. <laughs> yeah. Uh, rumor has it we're making tootling shirts, so we're going to sell them shirts and uh, restock Pleasant with largemouth bass right now. You're trolling with eight pounds. What are you going to do? I'm, I'm serious. I'm, I'm not. I'm not joking. There's 40, 50 pound stripers up there. Yeah, that's that's a world of hurt. That's just snap off waiting to happen. Yeah. And, uh, you, and know, you very the likely, most, the most I've used is 12 could get pound line. by one. I'll set my drag super light, 12 pound line at the most. All right, next time you go out, I want you to swing by the SRT tackle shop. I'm going to put a rod, a reel, with some line on it, and give you a, a raffle of Magnum 18. Okay. Braided. Super size me. <clears throat> yeah. Well, it's got 40 pound monofilament on it. Uh, uh. See, that's like, I mean, for me, that's like a tree trunk, 40 pound. Yeah. That's like Pretty a San Diego well, rig. Yeah, but you, you, you're you going to find out some things that, uh, there's a natural occurrence of things like testosterone. When you have a lot of it, a lot of bad things happen. Mm-hmm. You use bigger baits, a lot of big things are going to happen. Yeah. And I'd say this, this would be the year, this is the time of year to do that, I'd say. 
You should be on AZGFD record book as having the ginormous striper. Yeah. You could if you spent the time. And if you explore he, all got of the, the time. Lake. I know but he if does. You quit tootling around and get yeah. serious. <laughs> yeah. Not only that, if he would just stop tootling out to his one location. <clears throat> yeah. Well, uh, I got some things working. I'm gonna I'm gonna do some recon on the South Lake. I will admit, I don't know the South part of the lake that well because I don't fish it. I'm gonna make it simple for you. You don't even have to take notes. Go to the dam, face the pump stanchions, the pump columns. Yeah, those big things. There, you're gonna find two buoys on either side, east side, west side. I don't know if they still have the one in the middle. Yeah, probably. But uh, don't tie up to one because you'll get a ticket for that. That's, yeah. That's bad juju. Um, and there's a sign that says stay 200 feet away. Yeah. From the well, details. that's the yeah. nice part. Uh, I don't know what reel and rod you are using, but you ought to be able to cast it that far, an ounce and a half. Yeah. And then do about a 60 countdown. Put it in free spool and count. Uno, dos, tres, and so on. Yeah. And uh, engage it, and, st- and I mean it. Burn it back. You need about a at least a six three to one uh-huh. uh, ratio, and just burn that sucker back to the boat. And that's the secret. And hang on, hang on to your. I rod. can't say I've tried it because you're going to be snagging all the old bodies I'm that sorry. are in the bottom. Uh, of the lake. Yeah. The, the other thing you're going to find there, or all the other species are kind of ganging up because you've got a water uh, water temperature change. Yeah, you've got your normal thermocline right there, and that thermocline right there is going to uh, vary significantly what you're finding on the other end of the lake. Yeah, for sure. W- with that warm water coming in, because they're pumping that thing in fast right now. Yeah, it's coming up water foot a day. And I was, yeah, I was <clears throat> curious about that. Um, <clears throat> when they pump water into that, uh, I mean, I'm sure the, the water's a little bit warmer, but I didn't know exactly how how different it, how significant. I don't know. It was. I, I can't tell you what the water difference is right there, but there is quite a variation. But just because of the current flow. Lake Pleasant's one of the few lakes that, that you'll ever find that has water flowing both ways, north and south. So it's actually two currents there. Yeah. And the stripers, uh, this time of year have a tendency to hang on that, uh, uh, extended, uh, thermocline and, uh, nose into the current. Yeah. I like it's that. a good yeah. thing. Definitely. Yeah. You, uh, I'm all kidding aside, you, you can sit right there on either one of those buoys. Yeah, put a hundred fish in the boat. Yeah, <clears throat> no it's problem. a good spot at night. Uh, I fish there at now night the, a lot. Now your other your largemouth uh, crappies, whites, uh, they're all going to be hanging right there too. Um, the last really good good day that uh, I spent out there was Witch Jones. We had uh, sixteen pound uh, striper, which back at that particular time what was good, and uh, eight and nine pound largemouth. Wow, same spot, same place. Same bait. Yeah. Cast master. Uh. All right, I'll try it. Now, I'm not saying a rattle trap. The The problem with them is you need to, what, What's the heaviest rattle trap you can get your... They have, they make a one and a half, possibly even a two. Wow. I've got several one ounces. Yeah, I'd, I'd be uh, prone to do that as well. Yeah. I'd get a big old heavy rattle trap and put some uh, lead tape on the bottom. Yeah. Magnum. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. What do you think, JK? Oh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Well, back on line size, uh, what is the lightest line you throw out there under what condition, uh, a specific condition? Why would you throw anything less than eight pounds? Uh, Eight eight is as lowest I'll go. Brought to you by Bill Loot, Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, and Ram. I-17 and Camelback Road since 1927. Summer breeze, fresh water, soft water, watch out boys, fast daddy Don's gonna make some noise, me and the boys gonna shake the rattle in. Now, here's your host, saltwater fisherman, the man that fears no fish, bass daddy and tournament pro, Don McDowell. All righty, hey, we're back, thanks for joining us for the second hour of Shake, Rattle and Troll, uh, we've got, uh, J.K. Uh, relatively contained right now. Derek Franks is here uh, being picked on summarily across the board uh, for a number of reasons. He has a, uh, a writing t- 
tool, an instrument fashioned out of a 308 cartridge and uh, I like it. Mother of Pearl. Uh-huh. Uh, nice, along with some bright red sneakers, let's say. Yeah. And uh, we've learned a new word, tootling, so we'll... Uh, we'll trademark that later today. We will. We absolutely will. A uh, couple things I need to tell you about. Uh, Bill Luke Bath Days is coming up March 13th, 14th, 15th. And like always, <clears throat> we're giving out a lot of cash. You're not fishing for a truck or a boat or a car. You're fishing for cash. $50,000 in cash over three days. We have a striper derby. And I'm thinking, who better, JK? I, I can't than think of Derek another person. To head up the striper derby. As a matter of fact, I think that if Derek really considered us to be friends, since you're going to be so tied up, and since I'm not, I should be a client and. Derek and I should go out. Yes, because he's not allowed to fish. That's correct. He's a professional. Yeah. Yeah. But I, on the other hand, could split. Ooh. No, you could do that. Really? That's legal. Yeah. yeah. As long as you don't fish, you can take him and put him on We should fish. take his boat since we're you know, <laughs> coming up with all these plans. It'll match your sneakers. Yeah. Because, I mean, I'll leave mine on display and we'll get something that really runs well one thing uh that you need to know how i have not trained that 250 pro x beta tootle around i know that's a sad fact i have to improvise yeah you need to get up on the wheel (laughs) and holler hey watch this yeah (laughs) Yeah. uh, i'm good at that yeah it's all good we've got a lot of stuff coming down we've got arizona game and fish will be out there with uh, the ogd trailer uh animals reptiles boating safety uh, I'm excited to see uh, Josh Hurst uh, bringing the new OGT trailer out. They've done a little bit of rework on it. That's is going to be his first exposure to the public in a big forum, isn't it? Uh, I, you know, he's he's engaging the public, but yeah, as far as the mass of folks, yeah, we'll be there. We have the uh, United States Coast Guard showing up, Captain Dave, Captain Dave, yar. And uh, the Arizona National Guard. Now, <clears throat> what I can tell you is we have an air mission request in with the Arizona National Guard for a Black Hawk uh, in lieu of the Apache uh, attack from the 285th uh, Attack Battalion, only because the Black Hawk is, you, let's say, people-friendly. Uh, they get it staged and then disconnect the batteries and even... You and, I, I can you and I can get in there and push all the buttons we want to, and nothing, gonna nothing's going to go off. So uh, it's all good. We have uh, <clears throat> Arizona military vehicle collectors' uh, vehicles coming out. We have car shows. Um, while in California yesterday, I had a guy that says, "Hey, I've got 80, 80 cars from our car club. We'd like to come out and show our stuff." Um, yeah, full, full blown carnival for the family and the kids. It's all free. We've got five major rides, including the uh, big giant Ferris wheel. What the hell with all that? I want the <clears throat> cornhole tournament. But you know, Ooh. I was coming to that. That was big last year. We have. It's even. It, man, these guys are signing They're up. They're professionals, r- right and left. We should team up and do that if you <clears throat> want to team up on something. Derek, I tell you one thing: you and I can't drink enough to be able to be good. At Cornhole. I have witnessed that. Last year, the winners came to my booth, and they they were automatic. It was like four beers. Oh. First, first that was the first round. Four beers. The second round. Four beers. The, they won. Nine o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That started at nine. Yeah. They could be good fishermen, it sounds like, too. Mm, no. You, no, you don't want these boys in uh-uh. a, a bass boat. They have one thing. That's, they have board. one thing they have perfected, and that is the hinge, the curl, the, the curl between their, you know, the twelve ounces, mm-hmm. and then it's the same kind of weight that they're flipping the the sacks for the oh, cornhole turn. It looks training a lot yeah. easier than it actually is. Oh, yeah, I can do this. Oh, well, I can't do that. Yeah, I mean these these guys are just absolutely masters. Uh, they city, take in the, wind consideration. The city of Peoria has eked out a 5K desert trail. They're calling it the uh, first annual uh, Bill Luke Bass Day City of Peoria Cactus Dash. Oh, wow. And uh, The word dash and my body don't go in the same sense. This this man right here will take on the most technical, and and it goes back to the testosterone thing that he's talking about Uh earlier. Uh, Hunting with him is... Just a major malfunction for me because John John's kind of. You ever been around goats? 
Yeah. They want to get up on the highest thing that's around there. Yeah. Like JK. <laughs> I like to climb. Don likes to sneak around through the little, you know, through the valley. He takes the low ground. Yeah, he yeah. takes the low ground. I'm going, no, we got to see. We got to see. It's teamwork. <laughs> yeah, he goes low, yeah. I go high. I see. He's got the binoculars. I've got the bow mag. <laughs> <laughs> He's your spotter. I'm telling you, before, yeah. before Friday afternoon, FedEx will deliver bow mags. I have that figured as much. Absolutely. I'm, that is just nice. We're, I'll try one. <laughs> I want to know where we're going to practice. I'm thinking Jim Longmock's house. Oh, no, there's a thought. You know, just hang a target up on the shed. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> big old, big good. old hole after we're done with that. Yeah, book. it's crazy. <laughs> Kiss your arrow goodbye. So uh, anyway, yeah. Piggly's at the fair. Uh, we'll have the food out there. A lot of vendors. Uh, this thing's still evolving. We've got uh, uh, Daiichi Hooks will be here. Ron Stalling from L.A., known as Lower Alabama. Uh, Jim uh, Brown will be out there with these fish clippers and a long list of vendors, all kinds of good stuff coming on. Uh, music Friday, Saturday, uh, trying to figure out what what kind of music we're going to have on Sunday for uh, what would be appropriate for uh, trail runners. Theme from Rocky. Okay. Rocky I Tribute Tiger. Band. Yeah. Okay, I like that. We'll follow that up with EMT. Mm-hmm. So, I will need an EMT if I do the 5K dash. It's uh, <clears throat> You're familiar with uh, the layout. They're going to start at Black's Mountain mm-hmm. and run both legs. Or there's two two loops of roads up on Black Mountain. Right. Run down the uh, north side of the north ramp. There, there's a big hill between the south ramp, the marina, and the north ramp. Yes. Okay. They're going to do a couple laps around that down around, come back around the inside of the south ramp, clear over to the uh, sailboat shop, and then back into the finish, and it's, and it's right. It is exactly 5K. Wow. Whoo, man. That's a steep hill, by the way, from yeah, the south thank ramp. You. Yeah. You'd be hard-pressed to do a, you know, up-on-the-wheel lap on an ATV on that thing. Yeah, Exactly. I've always oh. tried to jog from the south ramp up to the parking lot. I've never made it without stopping. But that you, doesn't say a lot for me, though. You're, you're going you're going out with Jerry Tate. Now, Jerry's a little bit older than we are. Jerry will jog from the dock to the truck. Wow. Every single time. That's I don't know how he tough does Tough company there. He's an amazing man. And, and uh, being on the water with Jerry Tate is... Uh, just such a pleasure. He's just such a gentleman. Yeah. But he he lacks the enthusiasm that most of us have. Hey, fish on! Yeah. <laughs> That's where I come in. Yeah, Jerry's like, I get oh, overly excited. Excuse me, would you pass the net? Excuse me, will you calm down? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Chill out. Uh, uh, it's all good. Just feed him a maple bar. <laughs> yeah. A couple of squirts of coffee. Get his just, sugar fired good. up. Yeah. Good, yeah. I like to call Jerry. I talk to him. <clears throat> Uh, just about things that are going on and off the water, um, because I don't really have anybody to counsel to besides uh, yourself and him. You know, those are the two guys I talk to. Well, just to ask him to give you the nuances of Agenda 21 out on the boat where there's no interruptions. Uh-oh. Okay. <laughs> That'll put you in a tailspin. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> you will be mystified. Glenn Beck oh, no. has a new book out, Agenda 21. It's finally exposed in hardback. Nice. Does that take me off the hook of being an alarmist? And a Absolutely. Glenn Beck saying it's got to be fact. All right. Hey, we're going to come back, uh, finish up with Derek. He's got to go to work, and uh, then we're going to have our uh, Rim Country Fish Report with uh, James Kuganauer from downtown Payson, where I'm just sure it's just frightful up there. Yeah, it's real tootle weather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll be right oh, back. chilly. Wow, easy big boy. Easy. Are are you gonna put on a dancing uh, no. demonstration at nope. Uh, Bass Days? Nope. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Dancing competition. You can't beat the guy. 
No. I believe it. Yeah, two step shuffles or what do you call it? I'm not going there. No, I'm not revealing anything. And there is no tootling in that dance. Well, you know what? We just, Patrick showed me, he enlightened me the definition of tootling. I kind of like it. It's uh, goofing around or you can insert whatever word you want instead of goofing. But you're messing around with zero intentions. I like that. I like it. You're just goofing around. With zero intentions. I'm going to do that the rest of the day. I'm going to tootle around. Man, I'm all, right. all over that. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that the kind of the way that he is most of the time? Though? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Zero well, direction. Yeah. Well, today's moving back into 21st century with computers, so that could, let's just say it's going to be a long day. All right, so you're going to come out and handle the uh, Striper Derby at uh, Lake Pleasant. I sure will. <clears throat> so what advice would you give JK JK about catching the Striper? Well, Big Striper. At that time of the year, I think the reaction bite's going to be solid again, uh, fishing in shallow water. Water's still going to be coming up. Yeah. Um, yeah. I remember this time last year, and, you know, the back of Castle Creek is the hot spot uh, where they're spawning. So, yeah, fast-moving reaction bait in shallow water. What about trolling? Here, I'm sorry, I'm hung up on this. Trolling one of the big uh, 18 or 20s uh, uh, magnums. Yeah. Rapala makes them. Yeah, you could we, easily. We, we drag them behind the tuna boats for albacore, bluefin, yellowfin. Yeah, Yellowtail don't have a tendency to bite them as hard. Uh, they do, but not as often as the other uh, tuna species do. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's a great idea. Just get in the creek channel, troll uh, into the wind. Yeah, that'd work, too. Be so a plan B. basically what, what I need to do is set you up with a, uh, a small pin. Uh, about a seven foot stiff with a 30 pound test. And can you use live bait in the? Yes, yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Well, step one, net some live shad and, uh, see what you can go with. Uh, you know, while you're trolling that, you can also drag a line with a slip bobber. I did that all last spring too. If you had a live the shad. two rod stamp yeah. issued by AZG. You don't need that anymore. No. You don't need that anymore. It's included. It's all included. Oh, that's right. We're ready for war. <laughs> Armed and shameless. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt. Good stuff. Good stuff. Okay, Derek, I'm I'm serious. I'm going to take you up on it. Right. I'm going to enter the Striper Derby, and you're going to haul me my butt all around okay, your so secret you, spots. You could win in three. Hell, you could walk out of $3,000. Solid. 1500 for me, 1500 for Derek, no fees for the boat, all the fame and recognition. This is all plus plus. Sounds good to me. And yeah. Derek gets to put it on his website. I tootled with JK, and look what he won. Yeah. Wow. But I can tell you, we're probably going to want to use a different boat because mine will stick out, and uh, we'll be getting a lot of hand signals from the other guys, guaranteed. So we'll have to do undercover. It, it's you know? like jihad. Give them hand signals back. <laughs> yeah. The only problem is there's more of them than us. So? It, it doesn't matter. No. I think we really it, care it, what they the think. It's the guy that gets the check. It's, it's like we'll have 500 guys out there fishing for $10,000. Second big largemouth, which could happen doing what you're doing. Yep. It's going to net you a check for three grand. See? Well, I know where the fish will be at. Yeah, I'm down. Okay, and, one and question. And you know and I know that there's big largemouth under those schools. Oh, yeah. Okay, my question is, the striper, we don't have to release it, do we, if it gets a big striper? No, you whack it in the head, oh. bring it to the dock. Oh, I like this already, because I yeah, can't they're, that. No, you, once you put them in the live well, they're, they're going to expire. Go. Yeah. We have tubs with ice and a fillet knife. That's all I need. And uh, I have my Haviland. I don't ru- need a Rumor fillet. has it, I'm just saying, uh, Jerry Tate's going to be out there frying up some... Uh, Stripers making fish tacos. Oh, nice. Can help him with that, too. I'm all in. It's Mike fun. Hoffarth from Goodyear Bass, every year out there helping with the stripers. This year, there will be a deep fat fryer. Oh, good. Yum. Mm. No. Sounds like no. a plan. Oh, yeah. I said yum. Yum, yum. Okay. Is that with lemon and tartar sauce? or mm, Just lemon. I don't like the tartar sauce, but yum is good. Lemon is on it. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Is that a 
Uh, it's a gypsy thing. A cultural thing? Yeah. <laughs> Strange culture. I don't yeah, mind turning right, saucer. Right, right next door to the Hilton over in uh, Long Beach, uh, <laughs> where we had uh, Coast Guard training, uh-huh. a place called the Gypsy Den. Oh. Now, I don't know what that was. I have a fairly good idea what was in that door. Some good networking, probably. Yeah, a lot of networking going on. Let's just say there's Business probably, lunches. probably a pole <laughs> yeah. involved. You couldn't find a place to park for a block around that place. And don't use your business card. No, that's why I have, no, I, I have I, JK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, my name's done. Special K. Yeah, yeah. It's all good. That's funny. All right, so uh, what, what uh, choice of rod are you? You said it's six foot, six foot what? Well, if we're going to go big fish, uh, you go I'm going to use a six, six home, medium man. heavy, yeah. I'm going to use the one from Mr. Guggenauer. And then I got some brand new planer boards to put in play. I have one. Really he ma- James fancy. made me a seven foot rod that uh, was absolutely brutal on yellowtail. I remember watching that. I think it would be, uh, yeah. I've, I've got, got Mr. I'll, I'll fix that up for you. Okay. That's a hell of a rod. Oh, yeah. That's a good yeah. rod. I'd put that on, yeah. 30, 30 pound striper. Mm-hmm. Whew. It'll handle. It. Boy, are you going to get a spanking? I can handle it. Yeah. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll be doing the video production of it. That's fine. As I drive. Yeah. Well, we've we've got the boat. You you can use the GoPro. It's got you know all the little mounts. You yep. put it on your hat. Put it on your chest. Put it on your yep. foot. And also yeah. have this new uh, waterproof Wi-Fi. Uh, cable for it where we I can get a live feed in the water on my tablet. Serious? Yeah. Oh, this could be fun. So, just now, all you know. You talk to get? Jim Brown. I was talking to him the other day, and he has a new camera that Shimano has put out. It hooks right on your line, uh-huh. and it has weights and fins and all these things, so you can get it so it's tracking. Okay, right on your bait. Nice. So you can see what's about to happen to you, J.K. Oof. That's live time? Oh, yeah. Real real time. Wow. That sounds like fun. Yeah. You can hear the music playing. Na, 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 na. Yeah. Do, 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 do. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Ooh. Totally. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Get sure. your goosebumps. Yeah. Woo-hoo! A little yeah. twitch. There we go. Well, hey, I want to thank you for coming down. I know you have to go work hard today. Um Give me a call when you and Taylor get off the water. Yes, sir. And uh, if need be, come by. I'll put a rod reel and a couple of big magnums in your hand. May as well go big, boo. Yeah, might as well. All right, the tooling expert, Dirt Franks. He's out of here. The striper snatcher. Thanks for coming down, man. All right. Hey, when we come back, James Guggenauer from downtown Pace. We'll see what's happening over on uh, Roosevelt Lake. And uh, he's really big on Green Valley Lake this time of year. Oh, I know Is there is. ice involved? No, none. Not yet. Not yet? Not yet. I'm Don McDowell with Special K. We'll be right back. Way back cutting the grass. Left my truck at the boat ramp and my boat is full of gas. My old boss thinks I'm sick today. He won't have me to harass. Cause I'm out here on the river. And he can kiss my big old bass, kiss my bass. Yeah, man. James Guggenauer, the master rod builder from Room Country Custom Rods in downtown Payson. We're at freezing this morning. James, what's going on, man? Hey, good morning. Good morning. How are you guys? Yeah, we're we're suffering from winged radio today. We have uh, some technical challenges and uh, no, no uh, computers to work with, so we're just winging it. Perfect. Hey, I was listening to uh, Derek's comments, and I thought, gee, we don't need a fishing report yesterday, this morning. He pretty much covered everything, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> well, he's he's fishing on the north end. He won't go down to the south end where the water's coming in. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, hopefully uh, one day on the water with Jerry Tate will, uh, uh, you know, reevaluate uh, how to fish uh Lake Pleasant, especially for the stripers. And, and this time of year, there's a lot of big largemouth hanging down around that uh, that pump station. So let's just say things are going to – school's in session for the lad. Absolutely. Some of the local guys down in Tarnal Basin, one of the things that they always check 
is the times that the Bureau of Reclamation is going to take water out of Roosevelt Lake. Because as soon as they start to release that water, it creates that current you're talking about. And down by the dam, fishing can just be phenomenal when that happens. Oh, it gets crazy. Yep. <laughs> well, I have to ask before you get started on the report, uh, what's the weather temp up there in uh, Payson? You know, uh, yesterday afternoon and evening, we had a pretty good rain up here. So this morning, it is, there is a heavy dew and a little bit of fog, and we're at about 33, 34 degrees. That's uh, not bad. A L- little damp. I love it. Yep. Yeah. It's a damp, cool morning. Yeah, that sounds like, uh, ooh, there, there, there was a lot of dew, I guess you call it dew in California. Mm-hmm. You know, it was uh, remnants of fog. Yep. Yeah, it rained all the way from uh, Long Beach to downtown Glendale yesterday. Yeah, but up in Payson, when it's hanging at that 32 to 34 degree range, it's just, you know, Mother Nature is just a bit away from eight inches of snow or, you know, yeah, dumping some water that, on you. That's a different kind of cold, man. That's a cold that goes right to the bones. Yes, it does. <laughs> yeah. Well, it- my advice to you, my good friend, stay in the house. Yeah, uh, it's uh, it's nice being. I like the colder weather, and when it's damp like that, I even like it a little bit more. <laughs> hey, but let me tell you about some big news up in Payson. Two things going on, both with the Arizona Game and Fish. Uh, the first thing is that the Game and Fish is accepting comments on improving hunting regulations and guidelines. Uh, so comments are being submitted through February 15th, and a lot of local hunters up here are have some concerns over the number of permits that are being allotted in in certain areas. And here's a chance for all hunters to get an input to game and fish on hunting. So uh, all the details of this is on azgft.gov. So if the listening audience has an input input to the hunting regulations, go check that out. Hey, James, is that strictly for deer guidelines, or is that because the elk regs are already out for this coming year? Right. I I think it was for everything. They just said they're hunting guidelines. It, it that sounded like a general comment to me, but you may be right, J.K. Okay. And then the other thing is there was yet another article in the Pace and Roundup uh, about the Mexican gray wolf and the uh, intent to sue by the Arizona Game and Fish. So, you know, every time there's just a, a whisper of anything that might uh, impede the release of wolves, it's big news up here. What was the uh, long and the short of the uh, Pace and Roundup uh, article? You know, it was uh, pretty much factual-based. Uh, oh, there's a, there's a switch in reality for them? Yeah, you know, I kind of noticed that, too. You know, it kind of gives both sides of the story about, you know, wanting wolves and those that don't want wolves. But uh, it was... Uh, a good article basically talked about a lack of plan by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and that, you know, that needs to be in place. You know, how do you know when you get to the finish line if you don't have a plan? That's what got us into the trouble that we're in right now. Well, one of the finish lines we need to look at, uh, and J.K. brought this up uh, the last couple of weeks uh, consecutively running, is the herd count in the Yellowstone. Well, if you go back to the first um, DEIS that was published for um, for the Yellowstone herd, they wanted in between Idaho and Montana, they wanted to have um, ten packs of breeding animals and a hundred minimum of one hundred of the wolves. Well, one hundred became three hundred, and every time that they reached the numbers that they established, there was a lawsuit filed by the Center for Biological Diversity as well as you know the wolf lover groups. We have over three thousand wolves now, hundreds of packs, and they've devastated most of central Idaho. There is no question about that. That's the issue. If you set up a guideline, and number one, we don't have a guideline in terms of numbers. Number two, we have zero Mexican involvement in terms of the numbers that we have here compared to what they have there. And then the third thing is there is no guarantee ever that anything that they say is going to happen is going to happen because they'll be sued by the center. And they have judges in their pockets who are activists, environmentalists, and they listen to everything they say. And then, consequently, we'll have massive numbers. Well, with... 
Arizona Game and Fish Commissioner is the new uh, Attorney General Mark Brnovich. We're going to sue them back. Yeah. <laughs> I would, I w- you know what? Instead of reacting, we are finally acting. Yes. And that's the key. We're the first ones in the boat with notice yep, of intent to sue. This is a full frontal attack. Bring yep. it on. Well, like I said, any any of that kind of involvement or uh, news that gets out is a is a big deal up here. I was glad to see Congressman Gosar uh, issue a statement, uh, and so you know, once again, even that was in uh, the Pace and Roundup article. Uh, Gosar had spoken out to, in favor of Arizona Game and Fish suing the Wildlife Service. So. Jim, you're being a little bit too uh, politically correct. He just blasted uh, the Department of Damn. Interior. Yep. Yes. <laughs> hey, so the fishing on Roosevelt Lake um, called good this past week by local anglers. And, Don, to your point, the water level came up another 1%. Woo-hoo! 2% full. <laughs> okay. That, that's the good news. The bad news is that the flows into the lake uh, fell this past week, and they're back down below their normal rates for this time of year. Even based on what happened yesterday? That won't record till next week, I'll bet. Yeah, I think yeah, it'll take a while. But the good news is that all that snow that melted and ran down, that pretty much saturated a lot of the ground. So hopefully even a little bit of rain uh, will make a, a difference to the lake. So I'll keep you posted on, on that. The other thing is that the water temperature is just, I mean, it's going down quick. <laughs> For a long time, we were gradually falling in water temperatures uh, now, in the hottest part of the day, even on a clear day, if you get to the mid-50s, 56, maybe touch 57 degrees, uh, that's about where the, the water temperature is. So it's cooling down for sure. Uh, the other good thing is uh, we were down fishing this past week, and there's a definite greenish tint to the water, especially at uh, both ends of the lake. And uh happened to be with Clifford Perch, and I was asking him about it, and his thought was that that's probably the fresh water coming in, bringing lots of nutrients into the water and kind of giving it that greenish tint. So he thought that color looked very healthy for Rose Ballet and thought that it would be a good sign for uh, for the bass feeding. Good, good stuff. Yeah. And then just like uh, you and Derek were saying earlier, Don, uh, you know, fish are moving deeper for sure. And uh, guys are using those casting spoons that you're talking about. And uh, deep running, uh, deep robo worms, uh, you know, in the 35 to 45 feet water. Uh, jigs were working pretty good. But, uh, yeah, fish are, are definitely uh, getting into deeper water this time of year. Well, finish it up with Derek. He's talking about uh, he's going to get in his tackle bag and see. He thinks he has a two, two-and-a-half-ounce rattle trap. Um, I think the biggest I've ever seen is a one-ounce bit. But, yeah, anything like that where you can get down to those uh, schools of bait. Because, remember, the, the bait is going to be out in the deeper water this time of year, and the bass are going to be under that. So anything that you can cast and let fall through that bait down to where the bass are and then start to retrieve, it's just going to be killer, whether that's a rattle trap or a spoon or whatever it is. Yeah, I'm going to double-check. I've got some... Uh Great big old rattle traps. I'm going to leave it at that. I don't know what they are. They, and uh, there'll be a film at 11 on that next week. Yep. Now, the uh, the crappie anglers I talked to, they are still struggling. Uh, they uh, they were blaming the wind and waves that, was, that we had last week a little bit. But uh, basically, everybody's trolling now. I, I, don't, I didn't talk to a single crappie angler who is vertically fishing any longer. Well, Jay, oh. we've got to flip into a break. Can you stay with us and close the show out with us? Sure. Yeah, okay. Uh, James is going to hang with us. You're going to hang with us? Okay, I will. All right. And I'll be back, too. Thanks. I am from uh, Texas. I'm a cowboy, a real cowboy. Probably not a typical Texan in that I don't hunt. I fish, but I don't hunt. And not because I think it might somehow be more holy to eat meat that's been bludgeoned to death by somebody else. That's not it. It's really early in the morning. It's really cold outside, and I don't want to f- go. <laughs> My cousin Ray, on the other hand, thinks killing a deer with a deer rifle is magic in the forest. I would like to do for you now my impression of my cousin Ray. 
after the big kill. Well, it was four in the morning, 22 degrees outside. Of course, you weren't there, pussy. (laughs) I'm in a camouflage, deer blind, with grease paint on my face. I've got deer urine on my boots. I'm not sure why. I made that part up. I got a .30-06 with a 12-power scope and a bullet that'll travel 2,200 feet per second. When that deer looked up to lick the salt sucker I'd hung from the danged old tree, <laughs> caught him right above the eye. Yeah, well, I hit one with a van <laughs> going 55 miles an hour with the headlights on and the horn blowing. <laughs> Woo, that's an elusive little creature. If you ever miss one, it's because the bullet's moving too fast. Slow the bullet down to 55 miles an hour. Put some headlights and a little horn on it. The deer will actually jump in front of the bullet. <laughs> Brought to you by the Arizona Deer Association. Uh, no, that is so wrong. So, <laughs> thank you, Jeff. What <laughs> is wrong with Ron White? Absolutely nothing. No. <laughs> Back to you, James. <laughs> I can't talk. I'm laughing too hard. <laughs> Yeah, I just picture Dennis, Dennis perched on a uh, Ford Econoline van going, toot. Come here, Elk. <laughs> yeah, bam. Hey, quit picking oh, buddy. Uh, well, so yeah. We were, we were talking about the, the uh, crappie, and guys are definitely trolling now. So, you know, it's a little split shot weight. You still want to be using that uh, um, a quarter ounce kind of jig, maybe a three ounce kind of jig, and just trolling behind a boat. You know, our Chamberlain's famous for putting a... Uh, a live minnow on the, on his jig when he's trolling, but uh, that's what most of the crappie guys are are using now. Well, if you were listening to Derek, uh, you might suggest the uh, new technique of tootling around. So, uh. <laughs> I was hearing that. I, I don't know if that's an accurate term or not. I, I, I I'm not tracking on it, but I'm sure he's going to demonstrate. <laughs> he's never going to live it down, is no. he? <laughs> hey, you know, one one comment I want to make. I heard. I heard you guys talking about, uh, you know, breaking off stripers and things like that with fighter lines. And uh, keep in mind that what breaks, a, what causes a line to break on a fishing rod is not the action of the rod, it's the power rating. If, if you get out there with a heavy or medium-heavy kind of rod and you're trying to use a light line, then, yes, it'll, you know, you can break that off pretty easily. But if you go to a... A rod that has a a lighter power rating and maybe a slower action; those types of things will absorb that shock even on the lighter line. See, I knew it. That's how when you read stories about you know big fish being caught on a light line, it's because the rod they're using is a is a good shock absorber, and the fisherman has that in mind right. uh, when he's out there. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And. and uh... That's a good point. When I made the transition uh, from monofilament to braid for crankbaits, I'd say that probably the first dozen fish I lost. Oh right? yeah, because the I had fish. yeah I had I had a stiff rod and I had that. You know, basically, John, what I was doing was yanking the hooks right out of their face. Mm-hmm. So I had to go to a uh, a softer tip. I actually went back down to a fiberglass rod, a uh, seven foot fiberglass. A uh, very slow uh, tip, and uh, so the conversion from the Popeil pocket fisherman to that was the the big difference. Pretty much, yeah. Even you know, even in the yeah, spring, a lot true. of guys like fishing top waters or a spook kind of baits and things like that, where it's really important that you let the fish take the bait underwater yep. before you set that hook. And I mean, if you go with a medium or medium light power rod especially with the slow or moderate uh, type action on it. I mean, it's it's altogether different fishing. I mean, you rarely you lose a fish uh, using that kind of rod for topwater bait. Well, using the Ricos or rear Ricos, I think the, the secret is let the fish set himself. Exactly right. And, and it's hard to do. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you see a big fish coming up out of the water, John, he's going to get your bait, and the first thing you do is go... <coughs> Yeah, Oops. I, I've always. I'm, when I used to do a lot of topwater fishing back in the 
back in the day in for Michigan. Trout? No, I was doing it for bass. Oh, okay. You know, we were using those uh, those bugs that you put on top of the water, wop, 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 all the way across the top on a smooth night when there was nobody out there. You'd see the water swirl, and the first thing I did was jerk. Yeah. You can't help it. No, you can't. I mean, it's instinctive. Yep, nice. Just keep telling yourself. <laughs> Well, here, here's the deal. Uh, we're going to set uh, that rod that you built me that I took to California. Yes, sir. And whack the yellow tail. I'm going to set mm-hmm. that up. Uh, a 6 3 to 1 uh, ardent reel and about 30 pound braid. He's going with Derek to catch stripers, big stripers. Killer. That will be killer. Oh, man, yeah. Easy. I'm on. Yeah, there, there's not a there's not a fish in there that Roddy can't handle. No, yep. I don't think so. Well, I mean, we're talking, you know, some hundred pound flatheads. <laughs> I'm I, not I, going for those. I'd still give it a go on that rod. Hey, when you're fishing those strikers, J.K., especially with braid, the type of water you're fishing in, there is nothing to get snagged on. So here's what you, here's what you keep in mind: when in doubt, rip it out. Yep. If you feel anything, it's a fish. Swing. Perfect. Yep. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Good All stuff. Right, what, what, go ahead. I was just going to say, uh, you know, I uh, appreciate you giving the report, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. Absolutely. Looking forward to uh, having you as a guest at the uh, awards dinner put on by uh, AZGFD commissioners. There you go. Can't yeah. Can't wait to be there. An honor to be there, Don. All right. We'll look forward to it. James, good report. Stay in the house. Keep your... Uh, your sweater on, and, and if you have a nice scarf around the neck, keep your neck warm. Thanks a lot. Talk Good. to you later. See ya. What you learn in California? I'm not letting you go there anymore. We, yeah, you no, come I, back strange. I don't want to go to L. San Diego is one thing. You go to L. A. There, yeah. That, that's no bueno, Carlos. Mm-hmm. You know what I've learned there is every. You take that handkerchief off. It's every, been on you every, all night. Is it, it's an American flag. It's red, white, and blue. <sighs> I know, it's just the positioning and the style you have it on with your soft velour shirt today. You're scaring me. Okay. We have nothing to fear but fear itself. Damn right. It's a lack of <laughs> testosterone. I fear not. Anyway, hey, uh, check out the SRT website, shakerallentold.com. Our publicist has uh, a lot of information up there, especially on the uh, shots that are fired on the Wolf War, because I told them. We have drawn a line in the sand. Oh, we drew first blood on this one. Finally. Now we've got scuds in the air. So, a lot of good information there. Like us on Facebook. If you have something you you, you want covered on the show, shoot me an email. Don at shakerattleandtroll.com. We'll be happy to address that. You may even respond. Absolutely, we will. Okay. Uh, what's up with the ADA? We got a new raffle coming up. And we always have raffles coming up now. We're finding that it's it's a good way for people to be able to participate without having tremendously bad odds. So if we're having something that's worth a couple thousand dollars and we're selling 500 tickets only, get in and get in on it quick. Yep. New, new one coming up next week or uh, so? Two week, within two weeks, we'll have another one up, and it's $5 a ticket. All righty. I'm Don McDowell. Take your kids fishing. Hug your bass boat. We're out of here. Well, kiss the